Hi, Max Taylor here, editor of Caravan World magazine. This month we've journeyed to Mungo National Park, which is a part of the Willandra Lakes region and a World Heritage Site. This parched landscape covers 2,400 square kilometres and is made up of 19 lakes. But don't let your GPS deceive you, these lakes have been dry for 20,000 years. It's our intention to explore all this exciting area has to offer in the best off-road vehicles we could get our hands on. On the border of the National Park, I met up with two mates who decided to take the journey with me. Emma Ryan, the editor of Camper Trail Australia, and of course, regular Caravan World contributor, Malcolm Street. So Malcolm, I'm really interested in this tracker. It's an interesting looking bit of kit. Tell us a little bit about it. Let's go have a look. Well, this is uh, built by Tracker, a boutique manufacturer. They built their Jabba Revan, but they put it on a Mercedes-Benz uh, off-road chassis. It's a terrific vehicle, got a V6 motor, all-wheel drive, built to trackers, I guess, very good standards, so it's excellent for the off-road stuff. I think the fact that it's, it's uh, sort of a convenient size for this sort of travel, it's uh, comfortable enough to live in, uh, but it's the same size, it's good enough for, for track work around this sort of area. Well, I've brought along a soft floor camper trailer from Complete Campsite. Readers of Camper Trailer Australia will know the brand Complete Campsite. Very reputable off-road trailers. This one actually won our Off-Road Camper of the Year competition last year. It's a Jabiru soft floor. But this one, as it is, comes in at just under 35000 And folks, what I've got, what I brought along with me to Mungo, it's the Trackmaster Kimberley Platinum Series, all year for 2013, with all the good bits you would expect from a, a manufacturer such as Trackmaster. It's got uh, three solar panels on the roof, uh, each at 120 watts uh, capacity. So you've got the gas bottles up the front, you've got a, uh, a really strong and sturdy chassis, uh, all the creature comforts inside for a bit of remote touring, and uh, all of this does add up. It's about $73,000. That's a base price, folks. Uh, it does go up about uh, around about 10 grand, uh, as you see here. Well, guys, by my reckoning, we're about 50 k's out of Mungo. Let's jump in and uh, head on in. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Mungo is around 120 k's from Mildura via Arumpo Road. From Broken Hill, you'll cover 320 k's through Menindee and then through Nkeri before entering Mungo National Park via Top Hut Road. Of course, check the road conditions before going as roads in can be closed during heavy rain. As we made our way in, the road was dry and corrugated and only broken up by the occasional cattle grip which was scattered throughout the drive to break up the different regions. It was astounding how unrelentingly flat this landscape was, with neither a tree nor a landmark in sight. Mungo's fairly isolated, so be sure to carry more than enough fuel, water and supplies before heading in. setting up the complete campsite Jabiru and I'm going to give you a little tour. It's a good functional kitchen. It's got a three burner Smev stove top, flat out sink, plenty of storage and a bench extension here so there's plenty of bench space. The big 80 litre Waco fridge has been great on the trip. We've been able to fit all of our beer, all of our lamb chops, all of our chocolate milk. It's just a good functional unit that served us really well here at Mungo. There's plenty of space here inside the tent. Uh, heaps of floor space, so if you've got kids, uh, no problem to set up some bunks or a couple of stretches. There's uh, an inner spring queen size mattress, which is super comfy. Everything's sort of well ventilated and so far it served me really well at Mongo National Park. There was no better way for us to end our day of driving and begin our time at Mungo than by sitting around the campfire and sharing a tale. However, just remember, bring your own firewood with you because foraging for wood is not allowed within the National Park.
Well, it's a chilly morning here at Lake Mungo National Park, but luckily I have a rock coffee machine. It's an espresso machine, powerless, from Espresso Unplugged, and I'm going to show you how it works. Yeah. Some Victoria coffee. And compact it down. The great thing about this coffee machine is it's not just handy for when you're in the bush. It's actually just a really great kitchen appliance to sit on your bench. Makes pretty decent espresso, doesn't require any power. Raise up the arms. And then we just pull the arms down at a nice steady pace, not too fast so the coffee isn't too weak. And there we have a shot of espresso. So you can either heat up some milk on the stove and use the um, little handheld milk frother that's included with the rock machine, or what we've been doing because we're out in the bush, so um, we don't want to use too much milk basically, is we've been making long blacks and just adding a dash of milk. So that's what I'm going to do here. Just top this up with boiling water, dash of milk. And there you have it, coffee that's not instant in the bush. After we'd finished our coffees, we got into our vehicles and made our way out to Lake Mungo. On the eastern side of the lake lies Mungo's main attraction, a 26k stretch of ancient sand dunes known as the Walls of China. Made up of a series of lunar landscape shapes and pinnacles named lunettes, these ancient landmarks have been carved into the sandstone by the westerly wind that whips across the lake bed. Look, I'm just imagining, Max, this lake 20,000 years ago, brimming with water, megafauna at the edges, having a drink. It's pretty, um, definitely captures the imagination. Really hard to sure. believe that this whole area, many thousands of years ago, was full of water, isn't it? It is, yes, absolutely. So we really need to keep our eye out for like little um, fish fossils. Yes, as and evidence shells. that this area actually did contain water. That's right. While you can see the lunette from a boardwalk viewing platform, you can't walk onto it without a registered guide. So we met up with Graham Clark. Graham runs Harry Nanya Tours and is one of the traditional custodians of the land. And he's probably the best qualified to walk us down onto the lunette and explain its vast scientific and cultural significance. So if I go back in the book, that deeper browny, reddy, pinkish coloured layer in front of us, we call that a mungo unit. Now that one there, that's before the ice age, that layer there. Graham took us on a journey through history as he uncovered ancient campfires and fossils, and he told us the story of Mungo from its time as an abundant lake to the dryness that it is today. He also told us about Mungo Man and Mungo Lady, 40,000 year old human remains whose discoveries threw the scientific community into a tizzy over the origin of the modern man, while simultaneously speaking of an Aboriginal presence in Australia much older than anyone had suspected. This is quite an amazing landscape. It's fascinating just to stand here and look at all the shadows that get created amongst the sort of the sand dunes. Very impressive. The sense of history here is almost tangible. Despite its aesthetic, this lonely place feels somehow charged with life. The ghosts from this abundant past seem to live on here, only just out of view. This is the magic of Mungo, and it must be experienced to be understood. Our journey exploring this land has only just begun. To continue with us on our journey through Mungo, check out part two of this video below. And remember, read the full story in this month's issue of Caravan World magazine, and it's out now.